I've got in front of me today is the Sony HVR Z7P. And it's a fantastic little camera. You can use it for documentaries, can use it for news, can use it for short films, can use it for pretty much anything. And today I just want to give you a quick overview of the basic features and functions of this camera to get you up and running as quickly as possible. Let's go outside and have a play. So if you haven't used the camera before, which features should you be familiar with? Well, starting at the top back of the camera, we've got the electronic viewfinder. Across from that, we've got the cassette tape compartment. In the middle, we've got a grip to help stabilize our camera. Above that, we've got a rocker switch to zoom in and out with. Up the top, we've got a handle to pick up the camera and carry it about. Over to the right here, we've got the shotgun microphone mount. Beneath that, we've got two XLR inputs for the shotgun mic and possibly a lapel mic. And then at the front of the camera, we've got the hood to protect against flaring. You'll find the record button to start and stop recording to the back of the right hand hand grip. Moving to the other side of the camera, first we've got a switch to release the lens cover. The first ring we see here is our focus ring. Behind that, we've got our zoom. And the ring behind that is our iris control. To the back of the lens, you'll see a silver dial. This releases the lens from the body of the camera, so don't touch this unless you really know what you're doing. Above that, you've got a switch for the ND filters which are built into the camera. The power button is to the right of this, so there is a camera mode and also a VCR mode for playback. Beneath this, you've got two dials, one for each XLR input to control the levels of your microphone. Beneath that, you've got buttons for gain, white balance, shutter speed, and finally whether the camera is in fully automatic mode or manual mode. Beneath that, you've got a selector roller dial and also a menu button where you can control various features of the camera. To the very back of the camera is where you'll find your battery and battery release. Once you set the camera up on a tripod, the next step is to mount the shotgun mic which comes with the camera. Place it into the bracket, lock it off, and then insert the XLR jack into one of the inputs. Then on the corresponding input, Move the switch down to mic plus 48 volts or phantom power. Release the lens covers by pushing the switch on the back of the lens hood. Then on the back of the camera, insert the battery with the arrow on the battery itself facing downwards. You'll hear a nice satisfying click when it's in properly. If you need to remove the battery, push the battery release button on the top of the camera and then push the battery up and pull it out. You can either use the electronic viewfinder or the LCD screen, but you can't use them both simultaneously. So if you do want to use the LCD screen, pop it out now. If you want to use the EVF, then leave the screen closed. Next, we need to insert a tape so we have something to record to. So push down on the open eject button, wait for the tape mechanism to pop out, place a tape inside the tape mechanism and gently close that tape mechanism. It'll automatically insert itself into the camera and then you can close the cover. We're now ready to switch the camera on, so slide the button to the left or camera mode. The next thing I'm going to do is reset the camera back to factory defaults so everything's how I expect it to be. You'll find this button underneath the LCD screen. It's quite small so you'll probably need a pen to reset the camera. When you push on the button, it'll restart and everything will be reset back to factory defaults. Now you could leave the camera set to fully automatic mode, however this would somewhat defeat the purpose of using a camera like this, which gives you so much control. So let's switch this back to manual, and then we can control pretty much everything that's going on with the camera itself. This is our view through the LCD screen, so let's quickly run through what we've got here. Up the top left, we've got an indication about how much battery life we've got left. We've got details about the format we're recording in, HDV, 1080i, 25 frames progressive. Down the bottom left, we've got an indication about where we're focused. Currently, we're focused at roughly 90 centimeters. We've got information about our iris or aperture. We're at f4.4. We've got information about our gain settings. So currently, it's set to 0 dB, which is where we like it. We've got information about our current shutter speed, which is set to 150. We've got detail about our two audio channels, our two XLR inputs. And finally, we've got detail about our white balance preset. Currently, we're set to preset A. If we need to change our input levels for our audio, you'll find the controls under a little cover on the left-hand side of the camera. Currently, it's set to automatic, I'm going to override that by switching it to manual and then I can dial in the exact value that I need. I also should have some headphones plugged in to the back of the camera so I can really hear what it is I'm recording. 
The next thing I want to do is set up a couple of things that are available to me in the camera's menu system. So I'll push the menu button, we'll see the menu pop up on the screen, and then I'll use the roller wheel to navigate through that menu and push on it whenever I want to select something. I'm just checking my recording format set correctly at the moment. Yep, that looks good. Okay, the next thing I want to check is that I'm set to progressive mode instead of interlaced. Yep, that's looking good as well. Going back from that, the next thing I'm going to change is the histogram visibility. The histogram can help us check if our exposure is set correctly in bright conditions. So we'll go through the menu, as you can see there on the screen, we'll turn the histogram on, we'll go to end, and now we have our histogram. So the histogram is giving us detail about our exposure levels. So if it gets darker, we see the histogram moves all the way to the left until it's completely black. If things get brighter, we'll see the histogram moves all the way to the right. Ideally, most shots will fall somewhere in between, something like we've got on the screen here. Focusing is achieved by moving the ring at the front of the lens. We can also set the camera into autofocus mode by shifting that ring forwards. So now the camera is in autofocus, which sometimes works quite well, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm panning across to my background here and the autofocus just simply isn't working. It's not all that reliable sometimes. Let's pan across a little bit more and maybe we'll get something. Okay, now the autofocus has picked up that we've got a different object in front of us, so it's focused on that object, which is great. Now let's shift back to our rows. Waiting, waiting. Okay, the autofocus has completely failed here, so maybe manual focus would be better. I'll move the focus ring back with the clutch mechanism, and now we're completely manual. So as I twist and turn that ring, I can push and pull focus forwards and backwards. So now I'm pushing focus away from me and things in the background are starting to come into focus. Or I can pull focus towards me and then you'll see the focus shifts from far away to something closer to something closer again, in this case the leaf to the rose. Behind our focus ring we've got our zoom ring so I can move this up and down to zoom the camera in and out. I'm currently in full manual mode so this means I can quickly zoom in on an object, focus it, then zoom out and frame up my shot. But this isn't great if I want a really smooth zoom. I can just get these kind of crazy crash zooms. If I want a smooth zoom, I'll switch from manual zoom to servo zoom. So servo zoom is going to use a little servo motor to give me a nice, smooth, gradual zoom. There are a couple of ways you can utilize the servo zoom. You've got a rocker switch on the right hand side near the hand grip and that will give you a really nice, smooth zoom. And you can see this in action here. This is so much smoother than if you were doing full manual zooms. If you want a really slow zoom, you can push the rocker switch on top of the camera and this will give you a really slow push in or pull out, which can be nice in certain circumstances. Personally, I prefer to be in manual mode for the most part as I find it a lot quicker way of working. I only switch to servo whenever I need a really smooth zoom. Behind our zoom ring, we've got our iris control. So we can twist this left or right to let more or less light into the camera. So I'll twist it one way and things will get brighter because I'm letting more light into the camera. I'm opening up the iris or aperture. If I twist it the other way, I let less light into the camera so things get a lot darker and we can see that on our histogram. Our iris is our F number and we can see our F number down the bottom left of the screen. If the number is smaller, then more light is being let into the camera. If the number is larger, less light's being let into the camera. The other way I can adjust my overall exposure is by varying the shutter speed. So the shutter speed is basically saying how long is each frame being exposed to light for, remembering that we're recording at 25 frames per second. So if I record with a shutter speed of 25, it means that each frame is being exposed to light for 1 25th of a second. If I ramp it up to 1000, each frame is being exposed to light for 1000th of a second. So obviously a 1000th of a second is going to give me less light than 1 25th of a second. Now if you don't want to make this decision, you can just push on the shutter speed button once more and it will go into automatic mode. Gain is something that you'll hopefully not need to use, especially if you're working in well lit conditions. But if you are in a very dark environment, you may need to switch it on. There are three settings. You've got low, medium and high, and for the most part, it should be left on low. Gain is designed to work in situations where you don't have a lot of light to play with. It's electronically boosting the amount of light that hits the sensor inside the camera, and this introduces a lot of noise. So here we've got an artificially generated dark scene, and you can see that there's quite a lot of noise in the background, and here's an exaggerated version of that. So try and leave gain switched off unless you absolutely have to turn it on. 
One of the other features of the Sony Z7P is the fact that it's got built-in ND filters or neutral density filters. You can think of these like sunglasses for your camera. So if a scene is too bright, you could put the sunglasses on and properly expose the image that way. Now I could use my iris control and my shutter speed, but I don't always want to do that, especially if I'm trying to maintain a shallow depth of field like in this shot here. You can see in this shot here, however, that things are too bright. It's overexposed, so I'm going to try using one of my ND filters. I'll twist the knob and you'll see the sunglasses, as it were, turn on, and now we're set to ND one quarter. We could go to 1 16th and things would get darker again, and now my image is properly exposed. If I did want to go darker, I could go to the next level of ND filter and the next level again. So using ND filters we can maintain our shallow depth of field through a low F number and not overexpose the image. The last thing you should know about the Z7P is how to work with your white balance. You can have an automatic white balance or you can store a manual white balance in one of the AB presets. To set a manual white balance, push on the white balance button and then hold something white up in front of the lens. A piece of paper will do. Zoom in so the white fills up the screen and then push the set manual white balance button which you'll find next to the presets. And then hopefully you should see a significant shift and you'll get a correct white balance. So here is a scene that's not white balanced properly. Let's hold up a piece of paper, zoom in, push the set white balance button and after a second you'll see that everything that looked a bit off now looks white and our scene looks as it should. Once you've finished all your recording you need to capture your video and this is done on this camera through the Firewire port which you'll see at the back here. Now if you're using Premiere create a new project, put in a name, decide where you're going to save it and make sure your capture format is set to HDV. DV is the default. After you've done that, press OK and you need to set up an appropriate sequence for the camera. This camera records to HDV and we're in 1080p 25 frames per second. So that's the preset that we'll select. We'll press done to bring up the interface and then to do the actual capture, go up to the file menu and come down to capture. If everything's working, you should see stopped at the top of the screen. It will say camera offline if there's some sort of a problem. Next, decide on a name for your tape and also decide what you want to call each of the clips. Then go down the bottom and click on scene detect and this will automatically create new files each time you hit start and stop for your recording. Finally, press play and you should see the video start rolling. Once you see a bit you want to capture, press the record button and Premiere will start to dump that vision to your computer's internal hard drive. Once you're happy with what you've got, hit the stop button and then close the capture window. And what you should see in your project area are all the clips that you've captured and you can double click on them to preview them and also start editing as you normally would. If you're using Final Cut Pro for your editing, go up to the file menu, go to import and choose media. This is Final Cut 10.0.6. Click on the camera in the left hand column and then after a second you should see the vision pop up. When you're ready to import, click on the import button, create a new event, I'll just call this wedding and press import. Final Cut will automatically hit play for you and automatically capture your vision. Once you're happy with what's actually being captured, you can click stop import and then close the window. And you should see a piece of vision has now been added to your Final Cut Pro event. From here, you can continue editing as you normally would. Mm -hmm.